What is up folks, Justin Phillip here back again and today I am going to be sharing with you guys my filter kit. This is a super inexpensive case you can get off Amazon. Like when I say inexpensive, I mean like, I think it's like around 12 bucks. It's actually made to hold video games and Blu-rays so it turned out pretty good. It has a really solid zipper on it and it's nice and padded and it even has little extra little zipper compartments here. But as you can see, uh, there's all of my filters and um, this one I have out, this is the Simod Variable ND. I've done plenty of reviews on this. It's actually on this camera now because I'm shooting towards this window. But as you can see, you could just stack it if you really need to. And that's what I love about this bag. It just keeps like, when I first got it, I was like, oh boy, I don't know if I can fit all my filters. And I ended up getting more and more filters and you can, it just kind of like keeps expanding. So it's, it's kind of nice. I'll probably invest in a nice hard case for this. Um, but for now, this works pretty well. So uh, some of these filters I've already done reviews of. For instance, the Simod Variable ND still, in my opinion, the very best variable ND that money can buy. It has hard stops, no color shifts, no X patterns, and it's made with Schott glass, or which is the same glass that is put into Zeiss optics. So I highly recommend you check out. I'll put uh, the many reviews I've done on this down in the description below. I've even reviewed it against my Schneider ND kit. 0.6.3 and 0.9 uh, NDs of Schneider. These are like really top of the line square ND filters. And I've done a whole review on comparing them to the Simod and the Simod holds its own pretty well. And then to go along with that, um, I have four stops. This is the fourth stop, the 1.2, and this is a K-Vision. This is the Simod Clear Night Filter. I did a whole video on this, and people started kind of leaving some comments down below, kind of like poo-pooing filtration overall, and I wanna address that issue before we get deep into this uh, conversation about filters. People were commenting on this video on the review of the Clear Night Filter and saying like, oh, big deal, how amazing, yeah, real amazing, I can just change the white balance in DaVinci and I can get the same look. There's a couple problems with those comments. One, I disagree. And I think this is a common misconception with this kind of one man band mentality that we have nowadays. Uh, otherwise, I like to call it uh, the, um, the the video, the cell phone video era is like um, people not uh, respecting so much the art of cinematography anymore. Because when I say one man band mentality, well then obviously, and, and I uh, I used to be victim to this as well. I was guilty of this uh, many, you know, a couple years back when I first started this whole thing. It's simple, you know, you hear these famous words all the time. Oh, don't worry, we'll fix it in post. Well, now I'm getting into a new evolution of, of, my, of my cinematography journey here where I'm not trying to think like that anymore. I don't even want those words entering my brain, we'll fix it in post, because there's no real skill that is being applied there as a cinematographer. Not only that, but if you're not the editor or color greatest, then you're putting all of that extra work and time and money onto those people rather than doing your job as a cinematographer, right? And also, uh, not only that, but filtration for me is just as important as the lenses I choose. So everything is me securing my look and then going on to bigger productions, making sure the color greatest and those guys don't have such an easy way of manipulating my footage when I've already locked it down with filters and the lenses that I've chosen, right? Okay, so that's kind of the point of all of this. There are a couple weirdos in here that I have not tested yet. Um, for instance, this uh, 85 filter where you just set it in the tray and, and, it, and it's a color temperature changing filter. But this is an interesting way. What I do a lot is I've been stacking filters. Um, if you missed my video on the wooden camera Zipbox Pro, this is the matte box I've been using, and you can actually stack three filters in here, and you can um, you can angle them and to fight reflection and things, and it's a pretty badass little matte box, and it's a swing away, and this carbon fiber eyebrow here just shuts down and protects your lenses, and it has a nice knicker, and it comes with all the donuts and everything, uh, but if you factor in the fact you can layer three filters in here, and then also, put maybe a screw on filter on your lens itself. You could essentially be stacking four filters. For me, I've been having a lot of fun. It's fun doing that stacking filters and just having a go with it. If you've seen the, the intro video there, I actually had three filters on during that shot. I had the Hollywood black magic filter on the lens itself. And then inside the matte box, I had a fog filter and a sunset grad filter upside down. So let's take a look at those filters right now. The Hollywood black magic. This one, unfortunately I wasn't able to find in 
the square version, um, but it is a Schneider and I just ended up getting uh, one large enough to cover all lenses. So it goes up to 82 millimeters. And the story behind the Hollywood Black Magic, I had never heard of Hollywood Black Magic. And if you guys follow the channel pretty hardcore, you'll know that I was a camera intern, uh, like a camera PA intern over the summer on a movie that was starring Diana Lynn, who's in the new movie, The Farewell with Aquafina, And the cinematographer was Carlo Mendoza. If you're unaware of him, he is like the Roger Deakins prodigy child of the Philippines. He holds the Hall of Fame record for best cinematography award from the Filipino Academy of Motion Arts. And he just graduated from AFI, which is arguably like the best film school in the entire world. So I was kind of just like a little fly on the wall watching him operate. Um, and they shot it on the Arri Alexa, uh, small HD monitors, just want to drop that. But the lenses were the Zeiss Super Speeds, like Mark II or Mark I, like kind of the old school ones. They're like T2.1, T2, something like that, wide open. And the Hollywood Black Magic filter. He carried that filter on every lens throughout every scene of the film. And I had never heard of that up until that point. So I was talking to the first AC, you know, cause I was doing the, the camera logs and things and the camera reports. And I said, well, what is Hollywood black? I've never heard of that filter before. And then he started explaining to me, you know, oh, it, it helps with skin tones, helps smooth out skin tones, helps bloom, bloom out the highlights a little more. And I, and when I heard those things, I thought, oh, so I said like a black pro mist and we, you know, a uh, black pro mist filter. I've done lots of videos on this too. This is actually kind of how I used to make my Sigma art lenses look a little more uh, unique um, and give it a little vintage feel to it. And he said, yeah, it's kind of like the black pro mist filter, but, um, but, but better. <laughs> and I thought, oh my God, I need to get this. And plus the more that I was there on set uh, day by day and watching Carlo work, I thought, man, that Hollywood black magic is the secret. So I, I did do some searching around and I found a brand new one right over here in Pasadena. And uh, yeah, I've actually been using it in my YouTube videos. It's not on this one uh, because it's in my hand, obviously, but uh, the past few videos I've been using it because uh, you know, my skin is a little weathered. I grew up in Florida. I never wore sunglasses or put on sunscreen lotion. So I don't know, you guys can tell me if you've noticed in the past videos before this one, Many, many, I don't know how far back it goes. I, I've had this filter for a little while now, but you can let me know if, if you've noticed a difference with the skin tones or something. I will say, if, as you notice in these tests, as I've been talking about it, it's a pretty, pretty awesome look. I really, really love it. And I think it's great for any kind of like dreamy look you want to go for, some kind of like 80s vintage look, or just um, just to help you know older folks if you have to film some older people in a commercial. And I think it really helps smooth out their skin, especially for the females. Not just older either, at any age really. I mean, look at me. <laughs> Okay, so then the next ones that we can talk about are these uh, circular polarizers. And I actually have two of these. And each of them kind of have their own um their own job, I guess. But primarily these are very, very important for if you're ever filming a scene where you're looking at a, a cell phone screen. There was a, a, an episode of LOL Parenting that we did. That's a little web series on Facebook I used to shoot for. And she was looking at her cell phone. It was during the day and we we're getting some heavy glare on it. So I just threw this the circular polarizer on there and, and the glare went away instantly. There's also been times where I had to shoot through front windows of a car, you know, getting that like wide establishing shot, cameras outside by the hood looking in through the windshield shield and it just helps cut all that glare. You can splice right through the windshield and, and, and see the actors perfectly. So if you're unaware of circular polarizers, that's a, that's a big one. Okay, this is from the intro. This is the fog filter. Now this is pretty cool actually. So if you don't have a fog machine, you can kind of help give that hazy look to your image with the fog filter. And it actually works pretty well, as you'll see in this example here. I think it does a pretty damn good job of it. But also in that opening shot, I actually did have a fog machine as well. So there's a couple examples here where you'll see where this, uh, it's just the fog filter without a fog machine. And then uh, some examples where it's the fog filter with the fog machine. So it's just, you know, kind of enhancing that fog look, helping it out. Or even if you're on a super tight budget or you forgot to throw your fog machine in the car that day, well, this is kind of a, a cool way to get that kind of look. Diopters. The diopter filters are pretty badass. So these are um, some filters that you screw onto the front of your lens and you can pretty much turn any lens into a macro lens. Um, so that was kind of the primary reason of buying these and I have them in quite different powers here. And I even recently picked up a split diopter and that's where it's split down the middle and then you can really play around with um, keeping 
keeping uh, the background in focus while also bringing in the front super tight and large. And you can really play around with the, with the split diopters and, and um, just the diopters in general and without having to, you know, make sure you have a macro lens in your kit, which I'm really not in dire need of. So instead I was just like, I'm just going to get diopters and then I can make any lens a macro lens if I need that option. We have, of course, the IR cut filter. I've done plenty of videos about this, any videos or anything, plus links to all these filters are down in the description below. Um, then I have, oh, I use this in the intro and I talked about it briefly. This is the sunset grad filter. Now, primarily you would use this, uh, photographers would use a filter like this for their photography, landscape photography, and you'll see it's a grad filter. So it's, it's for, you know, if you're just doing a sunset shot, this is why it was made. Obviously that's why it's called the sunset grad filter. If you're doing a sunset shot over a landscape and you want to, you want to enhance the sunset, but then leave the ground, you know, natural looking, that's kind of what it's for. Um, but I've been playing around with it to, to introduce, you know, I've been on a few shoots now where I've used this, where they wanted uh, it to be more red. And I said, oh, okay, let's just throw the sunset filter in there and we'll make it more red, you know? Um, and I've been playing around, you know, putting it upside down and things like that. And, uh, and the reason why they make them gradual is so you can move it. If you have an actual map box, you can push this up and down and, and kind of really dial in exactly where you want the sunset look and where you want uh, your shot to remain normal. Um, another another uh, filter I've been using to mess around with color temperature and things when you just don't have enough powerful lights or gels or you know to really change the color of the scene and this is a lot of these things come in handy on music videos and I did use this recently on a music video the sunset filter and the coral filter kind of does the same thing but it's a little warmer of a look and it's just it's just if you're going for an overall really good um, color temperature change. And again, I know the haters out there are gonna be like, oh, big deal, I can do that in DaVinci. But again, I would argue that you're missing the point here, right? You're missing the point. Um, and especially if you're, if, you're, if you're trying to get into a world where you're not the color greatest, right? So I think, I think that's why filtration is so important to me. You know, um, here's a really fun one. This is the six point star filter. I have talked about this already in a couple lighting test videos that I did, but this little, this little filter is great. Um, really nice for really interesting bokeh and especially great for dream style effects. In that one lighting test I did, it really brought out those Christmas lights and just made things a little dreamy, a little fantasy. It's pretty, it's pretty rad. Um, here's an interesting one, day for night. So I already put out a lighting test video where I was, you know, showing how I'm going to try to do day for night on a shoot. And, and that example, I just dropped in ND to make the room darker, but here's something a little more interesting and a little more appealing. So this is made by K vision and it's called this quite literally day for night filter. And as you'll see here in these examples, it actually does a pretty damn good job. When I first got this filter, I was playing around like in direct sunlight outside and I was like, Meh. I don't know if this is really doing anything, not to like the degree I wanted it to, but then like for these interior settings here, you'll see in this test where it actually was like looking pretty damn cool. So I thought, hmm, this may come in handy after all, just as, just as a starting base, right? Like this day for night filter isn't like a miracle worker. Like you don't drop it in, oh, it's nighttime, you know, but for a starter, you know, like if you were just starting out, you get there, you set your camera up and you go, okay, this is day for night. Let me drop in the filter. And that's where you start from. And then you can build off of there. And then you could even drop another ND in front of it. You know, if you put one or two stops of ND in front of the day for night, then I think you're really gonna get into some interesting uh, territory. Here's one I've been using a lot lately, the twilight grad filter. Now, much like the sunset filter, uh, I don't really use this the way photographers would use sunset and twilight filters. You know, again, the twilight essentially is is the same job that the sunset grad does as a twilight grad, right? So you would go, if you're looking to get those great moon shots, you know, as you'll see the top here is a little purpley and then the bottom is more natural wide open and it's a grad so you can move it and adjust it. But what I've been doing is I've been playing around with the music videos again and uh, like the one we shot on the red dragon, you know, he, it just wasn't enough, wasn't blue enough for him. This is guys, there's not enough gels on the lights, what's going on? And I, I, I just said, okay, and I just dropped this filter in and then, yeah, that's great, what'd you do? I said, I put a filter on the, on the lens. <laughs> so, um, you know, sometimes, you know, these things, you know, this is another great way to just think outside the box. And I know like a lot of people are investing big money into RGB lights and things like that, but there's been some 
recent videos coming out, you know, kind of debunking the whole color science of RGB lights, and there's always that up for debate, but I think it's just cool just to stick the old school natural way and just use filtration, man, you know, like really start playing around and doing uh, unique looks. And with that being said, it's a great segue to the tobacco filter. Now here's a really cool like cowboy filter. It's like straight up brown, like you can just really enhance your scenes. I think this will be really nice to play with this in the desert and, and things like that. If I, you know, and, and the feature film, we are actually shooting in the desert. So that's kind of why I was like, hmm, this may be interesting to use this throughout the film for certain parts because there's a lot of cool driving parts through the desert where I think this in conjunction with the sunset filter is going to make for some pretty unique shots. Now, so there you have it. It's quite the collection right there. Uh, there are a few here that I'm kind of disappointed in. There is a company called Vid Atlantic and they make anamorphic filters, right? Um, and they had these for matte box. So they had this whole set and the sad part is is that I paid $100 for these and it's very underwhelming, I will say that. Um, so here's these three filters right here and they make different bokehs, right? So it's the small bokeh, the medium bokeh, and the large bokeh. And you drop these into your matte box and then they sell this one, it's just a tray and um, it has, I put, I gaff tape string on here and it doesn't come with string, but it has all these grooves around the edges and that way you can buy your own gauge of string, just um, fishing line basically, you know, and put that in there for your, for your anamorphic streaks, right? However, uh, these things don't work for me at all, primarily because I shoot on the wide end and these don't even look that good with a 50 millimeter. So I think these are probably better for like 85 mil and beyond. So if you're big into telephoto lenses, and you want like an anamorphic look, then these may be good for you. Uh, I'm selling these because they're they're not going to be of any use to me. They literally do nothing at like uh, anything under 50 millimeters. And I think the website does say that. But I thought, well, uh, you know, I'll use it on my on my uh, on my portrait lens, my 50 mil. But still, it's it's not enough of an effect to justify having them and definitely not worth the hundred dollars in my opinion. So I am a little disappointed in Vid Atlantic. Um, I just, it was completely underwhelming. So I don't want to talk about those filters too much other than don't buy those. <laughs> and then I want to show you guys something cool that I did to kind of prepare for the feature film. Cause you know, we're going to be working pretty fast and we don't want to forget like what filters we're using on said scene. So I put some strips of uh, Velcro here on the side of the wooden camera zip box and you'll see here I made with my labeler and it's pretty inexpensive you can do um, all of these have their little um, on the front here I made little velcro pieces and then with the uh, with the with my labeler you know this is the tobacco filter here this one is off of the fog one so then literally we can go down through here and put on here what filters we have on the side of the matte box, much like what you would see on a more like higher end budget uh, production. But this is really nice for us keeping track of what filters we're using on certain scenes. And when we go to do the camera logs and things of that, we can, uh, you know, the AC can do a perfect notation of what filters we used in that scene. And then if we have to go back for pickups or anything, or if we, let's say we're shooting a scene and we're using these two filters on that scene, then we go to lunch and we come back and maybe some things got moved around or something where I have to move the camera and we didn't have these on there, we might forget what filters we were using in that scene. So this just makes it really nice and easy. And I've done it with all of them. Every single one of these has the um, little label on there. So as always, thanks for watching and uh, I'll have links to all the videos and products that I referred to down in the description below. And for now, that is.